If you're looking for tips on how to manage permissions issues for radar in Docker, then watch this video. Hey, Gary Cruz with GaryCruz.com here, and I've been making videos on radar and sonar on QNAP and C Container Station. In the process of upgrading my radar container, I ran across this issue where my movies weren't importing. And so if you're running into this, hopefully these tips will help you out. So to give you some background, what you want to do is make sure that you take a look at your NZB client, which is your downloader, and take a look at the settings. And if you look at your paths, take a look at where this path is. All right, so I have my path going to share cached v2 underscore data slash data slash usenet. And if you watch my previous videos, you'll see why I've set up my folders that way. And if you take a look at where my folders are there, I've got that directory here under data and under usenet and under movies, here are the movies. But then if you look under radar and in my queue, these movies aren't transferring over to the right movie directory. So the way I fix that is I go to settings and I'll go to download clients and see where it says remote path mappings. I want to go ahead and map my remote path and let's go ahead and select my host. This is the IP address of my QNAP server. And the remote path is going to be what I showed you earlier, which is this. So I'm going to map this path in from NZB get, go back over to my radar settings, put in the remote path. And then, so this root path to the directory that the download client accesses, and then the path that radar should access to access the remote path. All right, so let's go ahead and do this and switch over to, where did I put that uh, data? Oops, went too fast. Um, so data, Usenet, movies. And you'll see the movies in here and click on OK. So this is adding the remote path under the download clients and I click on OK. If I switch back over here, and refresh these. These should go ahead and process in just a second. NZB client places downloads and Usenet movies slash move. Oh, I've got an extra M movies there. So that's the problem. All right. So I'm not going to edit that out just so you can see how I fix that. So if I go to download clients and I actually go modify this and put in movies and then go back over here and refresh this. Well, there it goes, that was fast. All right, so if we go back over here, these will actually be moved to appropriate directories. And if we go into my Plex client, uh, these should also be processed accordingly. It's October, I'm getting some scary move. there we go. All those movies that were initially in that directory are now showing up here because I've sorted it by date added. So that's how you take care of the movies not moving over. And then if you want to take a look at my system here, that's how I've got that config. And just to double check, let's go to the container station over here and take a look at radar. If we go to the radar and go under settings and under advanced settings, here are my settings for that. In my previous video, I showed how I set this. Actually, I'll do it again because one of the other things too is that my radar and sonar were out of date. And the only way you can update that is by updating the container. So let's actually show you the shared folders. So these are the two shared folders. And I'll put all this in the description. All right, with that said, this is how I go ahead and update radar. One of the issues that I was running into is determining the GUID and the PGID. Okay, so if we take a look at the PGID, 
I have it at 1001 and I guessed on that one and it worked. And then PUID is also 1001. This is going to be different depending on who you have using Docker. So let's actually show how you get that. So the first thing you need to do is enable SSH. And by default, you should typically have that off because it's a security issue. So if we go under settings, telnet and SSH, you want to select allow SSH connection. I had the default port number as 22 and I put secure FTP as well. But what I've done is I've created a user called SSH admin and only gave SSH admin access rights. So if we take a look at users under privilege and look at SSH admin. So if we take a look at the user group, they're part of this administrator user group. And they only have access to my movies directory. Actually, you know what, what I need to do is say, read and write for my data, not read only. And I'll apply that. All right, so once I've set the permissions for SSH, then you need to telnet in. And if you're on a Mac, open up terminal and SSH username at the IP address. So my username is SSH admin at the IP address, which is 110.0.0.154. And then put in the password that you have set. And then from here to get the IDs, you just use the ID that you're using for Docker. And mine is my name. And then you'll see that I have user ID is 1001 and the group ID is 100. Uh, same with this one, 100. So let's actually use those settings for the environmental variables when setting up Docker. And this is if you want to update radar or, son or sonar. So from here, let's go ahead and just delete this. And I want to automatically remove any anonymous volumes. So let's go ahead and click on that. Because the challenge that I had before in my previous video is that my images that it was referencing was still in the cache. So what you want to do is if you're updating, just go ahead and remove the image so it gets a fresh one. And also, if you take a look at the volume and container information, volumes should be empty. And right now I only have one container, which is Sonar since I still have that. All right, so now we're gonna start with a fresh download of Radar. We'll do a search for that. And then click on Install. And we want the latest version, so clicking on Next. And I always remove the minus one. And then scroll down to Advanced Settings. Under the Environmental Variables, we'll add PUID. And we'll add what the UID here is from the SSH that we did. And then we want to add the PGID. And we will add 100 there. So yours may be different. Make sure you go through this process to look it up. And then the other one I like to add is the time zone. And I'm based here in America slash Los underscore Angeles. And if you want to look up some additional ones, check out the description. Under the network, I'm going to add a, I'm going to leave this as default, but I'll add the port number. So if it's radar, I have a default to using the default port, which is 7878. So if you go to the IP address and put colon 70, 70, 7878, it will point to this container with the same port. And now in the shared folders, we want to add the config folder. So I've created a directory here. So again, this is covered in my previous video. So I've got these folders here and I've got folders for my media and I got folders for Usenet. But in this case, I've got a configured config folder for radar. And in this case, this is 
going to point this config to this volume. Uh, you, before it was up here, if you have a mount point up here, delete it because we want to have a volume from the host. And this helps from having to back up your settings files because they're all found on the host. The other directory you want to add is your data directory. So go to the data and just select data. And so this is how I've got it set up for both my config and my data. And now I should be able to go ahead and create this. I'll just review this host container and these are the host paths and we'll click on OK. And then we'll just follow along here and it's creating the container. It's going to download a fresh image, making sure that you have the most up to date. And that should remove the outdated version in radar. So now that's completed. If we go to overview here, we've got radar. And if I go to this IP address colon 7878, that will take me to my container. And if we take a look at my settings here, one of the things that I have to add is under my download clients. Oh, it saved it. So since I set that earlier and I had a remote path and the local movies, that should work. So let's just test this out real quick. Doesn't look like it grabbed Army of Darkness. I don't have any files. Let's test out downloading a movie. And in the theme of Halloween, let's get our horror movie, which is Army of Darkness. And Army of Darkness is downloading on the NZB get. Check if this was a success. All right, Army of Darkness was a success. Go back to Radar. Refresh this. And the queue is empty. And here it is. It moved it over to Plex. And so the key thing is um, if we take a look at the directory here and go back under the data directory for Usenet, any movies that are downloaded will show up here and then Radar will then move that according to the right folder under media. It'll move it and rename it to this directory. You can see all my movies here with the proper naming and year, all that is set up under radar. And these, since these are all under the share plex and the share data, these will have hard links. Look that up if you want to learn more about it. I'll have it in the description. Essentially, the too long didn't read means that hard links are not copying them over. They're just moving them from one directory to another instead of copying them from a directory which makes it much faster. So hopefully that helps you determine the permissions. If you figure out those permissions, especially with your user ID and group ID, and also the permissions. Uh, oh, once you're done dealing with uh, SSH, I highly recommend turning it off. So go back over here to Telnet SSH, turn these off and click on apply. And then also go to that specific user under privileges, user, and let's go ahead and disable this guy. Let's disable this account and click on OK. I highly recommend that you do not expose your your server to the internet. Uh, it keeps it much more secure. I only have this on my intranet, but whenever, even on my intranet, I disable SSH uh, just to keep it more secure. All right, hopefully that helps. Please, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. If you're new to my channel, I don't just post about QNAP stuff. I post about technology in general. So please consider subscribing. That'll help me out. And if this was helpful, hit like on the way out to let others know that this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.